it's Holly here from Your Past is a Gift. So as promised, I was coming back to talk about the different decades in my life and how life changes as you as certain things happen, as you evolve, I guess. So going through my teen years and how insecure I felt and that I had no confidence, you know, after a certain event happened, you know, competition that I participated in that for me was a total epic fail. But that was then, okay. Um, and then going into my 20s again, lost, you know, not knowing who I was, very angry, you know, because in the middle of my 20s, you know, heading towards my 30s, um, I split up from my first relationship, went into my second relationship, and I felt like I didn't have a say in, you know, who, in, who I'd chosen, you know, because my parents were against the first partner that I had and they just didn't want me to be with him and I just thought like that I should have been respected because I was the one that was going to be spending the rest of my life with this person not them you know but I could understand from their point of view that you shouldn't have to choose between your partner and your parents you should be able to have both you know there is enough love for both and that's what it always felt like I had to be choosing one side or the other constantly in this relationship but I ended that relationship very angry, you know, like with so much anger towards my parents and towards him for not, you know, for neither of them ever giving up, you know, and saying, okay, I'm done with that. It's not important. Let's move on to what is important. So my mid twenties, I was very angry. Anyway, and then, but still not knowing who I am, what am I supposed to be doing? You know, very confused about life itself. But looking for answers because it was around that time that I started reading um, The Conversations with God, you know, by Neil Donald Walsh. I read all three. I think in, as soon as they all came out, I read all three of them. And they helped me a lot to get through my guilt because I, through my teen years, for some reason, and through that year and a half that I spent at Catholic school, I had really latched onto this guilt. You know, it was this massive backpack that I was carrying with me and it really weighed me down. Everything made me feel guilty. Everything made me feel that I had done something wrong, that it was my fault. I always felt that it was my fault. You know, everything going on with that first partner and my parents was always my fault. I had done something wrong, that it wasn't working, you know? And so guilt. Then I broke up with him and there's that guilt again. You know, of, oh, I've destroyed this person's life. Guilt. So, yeah, that was that was really hard to kick that in the butt and go, you know what, I'm done with you. I've had enough of you. Um, those books helped a lot, you know, to see the world in a different way. But as I said before, you can read many, many books and they'll give you ideas, you know, of, of things that you can let go of. But until you really look at what you've created in your past, the beliefs that you've created about yourself, mostly about yourself, who you think you are from what has happened to you. Until you can understand that and see the truth of it, okay? A lot of those books will not help you move forward. It's, I remember I'd made a video previously about you can you know read thousands of books because I've been reading since my 20s. I have been reading and reading and reading all the self-help books, finding, looking for answers. Where are the answers? You know, where, where, where does it lie? You're looking out there for it. All the while the answers are all inside and I know it's you know you hear that so many times but the truth is the answers are inside because only you can know what you've been through only you know what you decided about yourself and about that other person and about the world around you you know did you decide that the world is a hostile place did you decide that it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world did you decide that it's not safe out there? That life does not support you? All these things. How many decisions can come, you know, from what you've been through in your past? 
And so you go into the world believing that, that it's not safe out there, that it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world. And so you go out aggressive, attacking, thinking that you have to be on top to get ahead. Beliefs, they're your beliefs. And that's how you go out into the world because of what you've been through because of what you've decided. So anyway, this video, I had just started in the previous video going into how life changes as you go through the decades. And so, yes, I spent most of my 20s and 30s reading books as much as I could, listening to meditations, watching The Secret a million gazillion times. I mean, I've lost track of how many times I've watched and listened to The Secret because that was the answer. That was gonna fix everything. Right, if I just repeated it over and over and over and just watched it over and over and over and over, I could just reprogram everything. That's what I thought. That's what I did because I believed in it that strongly. I bought the DVD, I bought the book, and I bought all the other books that came after it. The secret, the magic, the power, whatever came out, I was there. I was reading it, repeating it because that was going to fix all these patterns that had been created. That was going to fix everything. It was going to change everything. And then going into my 40s and we tried the IVF. This is where I was going to start in the previous video. And we ended up eventually having my daughter. And then nothing changed. Nothing. And at the time when I was pregnant with my daughter, I was reading the magic that came after. There was the secret, then the power, and then the magic. And I loved the magic. I read that book so, so many times. And to me, it was like my Bible. I would wake up every morning while I was pregnant. I would read that book. And for a while, it made me feel wonderful. I loved it because it's all about gratitude. So it was wonderful. You know, the, the book, The Power, is all about love and loving what we want into our lives. When you give love for something, you attract it into your life. And I understand that. But I also understand that no matter how much love you can give for something, if you've decided in your childhood that you do not deserve it and that you are not worthy of it, all the love in the world is not going to attract it. Because in your subconscious, you've already decided. Way back here, you've already decided. There's a big stop sign saying, no, nah, I'm not allowed to have that. No matter how much love I'm going to give for it, I'm not allowed to have it. Big stop sign. No. Nah. Take it back. That's how the past works. There's all these little stop signs in the back of your head going, nah, that can't come in. That's not allowed in. I'm not having that. All the while you repeat all these affirmations. I love that. I want that. I've got to have that. I wish I had that. I am that. You can say it in just words. You can say it a million times over and over. I did with the secret. I know. But it's not going to change anything because those beliefs you've created in your past they're not allowing any of that in you're not you're not allowing it in you've decided you don't deserve that you're not worthy of having that you're not good enough to have that so when my baby came eventually and i'd finished reading the magic for i don't know probably the 40th time <laughs> Okay, because nine months is a long time to read the same book over and over and over. So she came and of course lots of sleepless nights and all the rest of it. And as grateful as I felt at the time, I found pretty quickly, six months into her being here, to the first, you know, to the end of that first year, all my old patterns coming back, all my anger, my frustration, all my all my old patterns started to re-emerge. And that's when I had to address it. That's when I thought, I can't. I honestly can't keep living like this. But I can. A lot of people do. But there's got to be a way. There's got to be an answer to why. Why do I keep feeling like that? Why? There's nothing changed. No matter what's happening out there, no matter what I get into my life that I think that's going to make me happy, that's going to make me feel whole, that's going to make me feel complete or better about myself and nothing changes there's a reason for that 
and going into your 40s, your life suddenly doesn't seem like you've got forever to live it. In your 40s, you're starting to feel like you're halfway there. It's a very different perspective to life. Once you're in your 40s, heading towards the end of 40s. You know, your life seems to be a lot more precious. So, but life is always precious. Because like I said, one of my cousins passed away at 38. My best friend, one of my best friends last year passed away. She was 35. Some of you may not even get to your 40s. So do this. Do this process. It's here for you. It's free on all these videos. Follow the process. It's so simple. It's not easy. I'm not saying it's easy because for me, when I started to write it all down, it was not easy. But it is simple to do. It's not that complicated to follow how to do it. Right, my darling? I love you guys. Remember to click like and subscribe below so you don't miss any of the messages. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.